ask you a question, and that is, what is in your life's blueprint? This is Jeremy Till, the host of the Operator Podcast. We'll be taking you on a journey with us, interviewing some of the top performers in their field on how they operate and get the job done. At the end of the day, we want to be our best. We're going to help provide the information, the data, and the science of how to achieve that mentally, physically, and spiritually. Let's go! go! Awesome, guys. Well, welcome to the Operator Podcast. Today, we have our guest, Dr. Gary Ryan. Uh, You know, this is interesting because there's a lot of words to be used around the technology and, you know, the cellular exercise, the training modality that you are involved in. And I don't necessarily want to mess that up. So I'm going to come first to you. And I would just love to hear your introduction uh, to who you are. Uh, what your story is and, and how you've come about um, to this technology. If we start at the very beginning, and I won't belabor the backstory, but I think it helps. It'll shed some light. I grew up in Youngstown, Ohio, when it was a steel town. So it was a rough, tough town. There was no such thing as health food, and the two sports were fighting and football. <laughs> and then with some boxing thrown in. So it was kind of tough. My mother and father had health problems from a very early age. My father died early of heart disease. My mother died early of cancer. The discernment there thrust me into a kind of a very, from a very early age, a health mode. So by the time I was 12, I wouldn't eat a French fry. I was avoiding trans fats. So, and that was way back when I was born in 1949. So the idea of health food was unique to the time. What spurred me on was going into the, they didn't have health food stores, they had barbell stores. So you'd go in to buy barbells to work out for football or work out for boxing. And in the back of the store, in these little circular stands, there were pamphlets and the pamphlets were by Jack LaLanne and Paul Bragg. So I brought these pamphlets back to my mother, who was a nurse, and my father, who was a businessman, and made them insane trying to get them to eat better. So basically from age eight or nine through present day, uh, my slant has been what makes us work better. So that was what started me to pyramid or to grow in this particular direction. So we're getting to the technology. It'll get simpler. Um, an incident surfing on Kauai left me with a paralyzed right leg. Seeking medical help, I didn't receive much satisfaction. And then seeking alternative care, I didn't get very far either. And then I ran into a naturopath, chiropractor, homeopath, herbalist, um, on and on and on, who helped me and got my health going again. So that was the inspiration once I regain my ability to walk, to be able to go into the healthcare field. My desire to live here in Hawaii was spurred by my desire to work with this doctor. So for close to 40 years or a little over 40 years, I was mentored as a, uh, what do we want to say, grasshopper, as the karate kid um, with this man for over 40 years. And that was where I chose to study. So that's what got me into Hawaii or got me here. The technology that you're speaking about, <clears throat> when I was 55, 56 years old, I went up to the, uh, I surfed and, you know, pretty as much, basically as big as we're uh, riding at that time here in Hawaii. And I saw there was this thing called master swimming. And I thought that might be interesting and a great way to stay in shape in the summer because there's not much surf. And so I joined the master's program and I was up there in my surf trunks. I couldn't make the board go forward. Um, I was basically a drowning victim. And of course there were some pretty accomplished swimmers there at that particular time. And after about six months, they said, hey, you know, maybe you can swim in one of these competitions. 
And the real good guys said, well, no, you know, you didn't grow up swimming, so you really couldn't, you know, be very good at it, which is was kind of all I needed to hear. And from there, I two years later, I won my first gold medal at a champ, world championship. So the swimming came lately. So this is going to lead us into the high performance. About that time is when I began to work with the technology, which the acronym is PEMF, Pulsed Electromagnetic Frequency. To understand what that does or how it can help someone is very, very simple. Most or everything that I'm going to tell you, I'm going to say or regard as science. What I mean by science is down there in Austin, if you're sitting by the campfire and you have a cup of gas and you throw that gas on the campfire, what's going to happen? It's going to ignite or it's going to. Exactly. It's going to ignite. It's going to explode. Whatever you want, whatever we're going to call it, you're going to get a reaction. That's. It doesn't matter. It's just science. It doesn't matter whether we do it in Austin or on Maui. It doesn't matter what your nationality is. It doesn't matter what your belief system is. It really doesn't matter what country we do it in. It's going to ignite. So that's science. So up until present time, most or the, all the information I'm going to give you is based on that kind of science, although some of it may seem a little bit cutting edge or we may not be familiar with. So physically, Jeremy, you are a pile of cells. Mm -hmm. mentally and spiritually wherever you want to go physically you're a pile of cells according to the experts i've never counted them there's a hundred trillion cells in your body each one of those cells according to 2018 neurobiology is more of a battery and tesla was the one that first looked at that and those batteries are what charge your system they produce a magnetic field they produce series of magnetic fields work wholly and singly together as units. The cells all work the same. When, they're, when we're 19 years old and we're perfect, that cell looks like a big, fat, juicy grape. It's plump, it's moist, and it works by expanding and contracting. And it has normals just like everything else in the human body. Vision is 20-20. Normal body temperature is 98.6. Uh, blood pressure, there's a range, but it's 120 over 80. And those normal cell batteries have a 70 millivolt charge. They expand and contract just like sponges. When they contract, they're throwing off wastes. When they expand, they're drawing in four things. Light, oxygen, water, and M&Ms. Plain or peanut? Oh, man. Peanut butter. All right. Actually, the M&M stand for macro and micronutrients. So those cells are drawing in all four of those things, and that's what makes them work. As we age, for many different reasons, we begin to lose cell charge. Stress, trauma, telomere shorten, toxicity. There's many reasons that we begin to lose cell charge. And those grapes begin to look more like raisins than they do grapes. So what does a very old person look like? Well, they're kind of old and wrinkly and shrunken and they look like a raisin. Along comes a guy named Tesla, who's the first I've heard about it. And he said, you know, that idea of biochemistry isn't wrong, but it doesn't really give us the insight that we would like in terms of how these cells work. So however, he did and knew so much that he knew, he was a pretty bright guy that it was really electricity and electromagnetic fields that were operating in the body. And when they became in disarray, the cell charge has changed and the actual body physiology and function began to change. So Yale did a lot of research on it, but they found that every pathology in the human body is preceded by a drop in cell charge. Every pathology is preceded by a drop in cell charge. So people don't get cancer. They lose their cell charge. And as a result of malfunction, cancer can occur. People don't get heart disease. As a result of a loss of cell function, they may have arthrosclerotic arteries, but they're really losing the charge first to get there. So the idea being is our youth our vitality is 
based on how charged those cells are. Now, as an athlete, you'll hear some of the athletes going out there now doing paleo, doing ketogenic, doing hunter-gatherer. You hear all these terms, and what they're really working with is they're optimizing their cell charge. The battery is alkaline. I'm sure you got a Costco there in uh, Austin. If we go to Costco, we're going to buy Duracell. That's their brand. And on the side of the package, it says alkaline batteries. So the idea is that cell should be more alkaline than acid. And therefore, when we're looking at the cell as a battery, as opposed to just a cell, the idea of nutrition kind of begins to drop off because we know a battery requires certain things. So the beauty of the technology, which came to me when I was just starting that swimming, is pulsed electromagnetic frequency. I thought the more charged I can get my cells, the higher performance model I'm going to be. <clears throat> so as I began to use the technology, I don't know how to put it on an objective level. I just felt really good. And of course, my times came down and of course, I did exceptionally well at, at the swimming where I was told that I couldn't do it before. So the idea with the technology is you're now able to charge a cell in a way that we couldn't do before. With propeller planes, we could only go so high. With a jet plane, we could only go to, I think it's 85,000 feet. With a spacecraft, we can go beyond the Earth's atmosphere. The PEMF, especially the high voltage PEMF that Emilio is working with, goes down to a level in the cell that actually penetrates it and brings it back, gives it the raw energy it needs to raise that cellular charge back to normal. Whether you're talking high performance, whether you're talking recovery, the ability of that cell to normalize and to function is so enhanced by it, I think we're gonna find this as common as using an electric toothbrush. Mm -hmm. Well, that's exciting. I think that, that the first question that comes to mind is, you know, you talked about the 19-year-old, and then you think about the 30-year-old, their, their cells are going to be at different, you know, stages of, their, of the recharge process. And so I think about, for me, I'm 36, you know, and I'm starting to get interested in this type of technology to continue to, you know, exercise my cells and continue to stay in a great physical state. So do you think that younger athletes between the age of 19 and 26, maybe specifically males, would benefit from this product? Or is it past when they start to lose the, the cellular charge that, that they would need this technology? Where do you see, because like my father is 67 and, and I um, got him with Emilio to get on, and I know like this would benefit my father tremendously. So in that age range, where do you see that the, you know, it would benefit athletes to you know, participate with the, the technology? Well, great question. One of the things is, does the 19-year-old athlete have cells? Yes. So again, not to be obsequious or <laughs> no matter what level you are, the more you're able to charge the cell, the more high performance you're gonna get. And he's gonna increase his, if he's at 100%, he will increase his ability to 110. It will raise the bar. I've been working with it now 11 years. For a long period of time, I was the performance guy for Burton Snowboards way back when snowboarding just began and, and it was not a trick snowboarding it was all gs and giant solemn in europe so having worked with athletes for so long and that was 18 to 30 year old people it will raise their performance instantly and they'll you'll be able to do objective tests to be able to measure that performance as well there's so much good technology now being able to measure how good a cell is and how well it's performing that I think you'd find it work almost immediately. And so with, um, we'll get into more of the specifics of the technology, but more in a sense of the engagement, the rhythm of how often you would get, you know, a treatment, 
um, a session. How, what is the protocol that you would say, if, like me, I'm 36 years old, you know, I have two children, a five and a two year old. I want to be, you know, peak state performance wise, feel amazing. How often would you recommend me use the, the technology? Well, that's a great question again. And I won't use you because you look pretty darn healthy, but basically you're going to turn around and say, how healthy are the batteries? Okay, so let's just say, you know, you take a 36 year old, if his diet is very acidic, meaning grains and sugars and the average diet, it's going to take more to get his cells charged. His cho his consumptive decision is going to be what what's contained within the battery, what's contained in the cell. So as the cell becomes and this is just hard science. The, the normal cell has a particular pH range, which corresponds to the voltage. Voltage is pH, pH is the voltage. So if your diet is more of a ketogenic, paleo, something like that, you're going to have a more alkalized cell. You're going to need less charging. You're going to respond much better. If someone else's diet is very sugar-based, alcohol-based, you know what I mean, party-based diet, it's, going to, it's not going to respond as well. It's not going to hold the charge as long. The healthier the cell, the more it's going to hold the charge. Also, the healthier the cell, the more potential it is to hit a higher range of charge. Your age is 36, but your cellular age is dependent on how charged the cell is. So the average 36-year-old may be so much, you start charging on a regular basis, and you're going to have your body back of a 27-year-old. How would I turn around and do it? Well, one is I would turn around and look at your particular parameters. One is obviously you want to charge the musculoskeletal system. We know high performance is based on the training effect, and the training effect is based on recovery. So you can't train seven days a week at full speed because you never recover. You're never going to get the training effect. The technology will help you um, get that training effect more efficiently and be able to have you train more and deeper you know, to do deeper levels of training. The other thing that's going to do, it's going to raise your bi or lower your biological age because your cells are going to be more charged than they possibly could be at 36. What we find with the technology is that no different than me turning around and going, man, I got an F-22 Raptor. I can fly higher than you can with the Cessna. So both of those pl planes will put us in the air, but the Raptor is going to do things that the Cessna can't. So that's where the technology is going to help take you to a place that you couldn't have gone before. We'd look at your musculoskeletal system. We would turn around and look at the organs themselves because you're basically charging every single cell in your body. One of the things we're learning about the training effect is we used to think it was just the muscle recovery. But of course, the organs you're going to turn around and be working your organs as well as the musculoskeletal system. The most exciting thing that I found was that we're also going to be doing your glandular system. So <clears throat> as we have heard, and I don't know how prevalent it is now, but people using performance enhancing drugs, PEDs, why are they using them? Well, what they're doing is they're after, in some way, they're turning around and uh, boosting that endocrine system to turn around and raise their steroid hormones, whether it's growth hormone, whether it's testosterone, whether it's all the different things in the body to work. As we turn around and do your pituitary, which is growth hormone, as we turn around and do your pineal, as we do your thyroid, as we do your adrenals, as we do your testes, you're going to watch all those glands are made of cells. As the cells begin working more efficiently, all that hormonal system will begin to work more efficiently. Combined with the right fuel for the batteries, you're reaching a level of high performance heretofore really unthought of. Whether it's 36, 16, or what was your dad? 67. 66. What's that? 67. Okay. So the same effect is going to happen. Now, I'm not saying your dad's going to be a 20-year-old, but used on a consistent basis, he will begin to feel different. What I watch is in my little world over here is people go, yeah, right, uh-huh, because you can hear anything you want on the internet. You can hear anything about any supplement you want. You Whatever you want to believe, someone's going to turn around and tell you that this is so. What's so fun to watch is that after a couple of months going, oh, my God, 
you are right. And it's not a question of being right. It's just a question of science. Way back when, Jeremy, <clears throat> when I was young, they used to take, I'm still young, when they used to take the batteries out of the car and they'd bring them to the service station. They didn't throw them away. And they would turn around and take distilled water, put it in the battery, hook it up to a charger, and a couple hours later, you had your battery back again. It was science. It wasn't based on what phase the moon was in. It wasn't based on whether Mercury was retrograde. It wasn't based on anything except if the battery wasn't too far gone, you had to put in distilled water, okay? just like the cells need certain things which go past the point of opinion. I know because I put tap water in my dad's battery and ruined it. But you put in that distilled water, hook it up to the battery cables, and you've got a charged battery. The PEMF equipment is going inside the cell, your 100 trillion cells, and actually boosting the energy in the cell in a way that we couldn't do before. Mm -hmm. Then that combined with, we'll just say the right diet, boy, you're going to be rocking. Mm -hmm. So and it doesn't take forever. So talk to us about, for the listener, just to understand what does a session look like? What, what you said, put it in your cells. Like, are you putting something inside of me? Like, what is it that this technology and, and like, how does this session work so they fully understand what we're talking about? Um, be great if we had a picture. What it is is you see a, about the size of a suitcase, which is a generator, which generates the electricity, which goes through a big, thick cable. And that cable is attached to coils. Again, this is Tesla figuring this out. And it goes through the coils. The when the electricity goes through the coils, it turns it into a magnetic field. The magnetic field is actually electrons. The electrons are pulsed at anywhere from one pulse per second to 10 pulses per second, very gently, no pain. You actually feel it, and it begins to go through the body. So you, you feel this phenomena, and you feel a slight pulsing sound. Or, I mean, you feel a slight pulse and you may hear a little click from the machine. The way that it's applied is there's a bed that you lay on very comfortably. And in the bed are all the coils. There are also pads and paddles so you can be specific to a point. So if an athlete needed, had a knee injury, the knee's made of cells. The cells, when you have pain, have dropped from a 70 millivolt to a 50 millivolt charge. So the technology will help raise that 50 millivolt pain cell back to a 70 millivolt rock and roll cell in a much shorter period of time than it would heal on itself, or it will touch injuries in a way that we couldn't touch before. So there's pads, pallets, and beds that you lay on, and the generator's turned on, and you feel this slight, pleasant pulsing throughout your whole body. It's not subtle. Generally, a session that I use is around 50 minutes. So people do them anywhere from a half an hour to an hour. I like mine around 50. That's me personally. And then when I use it professionally, you know, it's around 50 minutes. And, and so for you, when you were using it, when you were swimming, were you getting um, one treatment a week, two treatments a week? How many times were you using it? Well, I have had it in, at that time I was in active practice and I had six machines in my clinic. And so I was doing it every day. Gotcha. I mean, literally every day. And the For people that are- minutes? Was it 50 minutes? Yes. Okay. Yes, and I might not hit it at 50 minutes at one time. I might hit 20, 20, and 20. Or I might get an hour and lay on the thing for an hour, but basically that, that's what I was doing. So one day I might be, because being a swimmer and swimming butterfly, I might be focused on my shoulders and hips. The following day, I might be hitting my organs, making sure that my liver was working, making sure. Now, it's not that it wasn't working, but the liver, obviously, the better it works. There's about 600 things the liver does for an athlete. The better it works, the better you are. Same thing with my heart, same thing with it. And then three days a week, without fail, I was hitting the endocrine system, eight minutes on the pituitary, eight minutes on the thyroid, eight minutes on the adrenals, eight minutes on the testes. Mm. Yeah. That's, um, I, I could recall, you know, my session I did with uh, Emilio, you know, the, the calm and the lack of irritation in my day to day. And that was the biggest thing I took away was within 24, 48 hours, things that might have irritated me, just traffic or 
something that's bothersome uh, just went away. And I was very just calm and, um, and very, which allowed me to be very clear headed and reduce the static that might be um, calling me over here that's in my mind, you know, because my body seemed to be more at a resting space. Um, which was super powerful. You know, I've done like the, um, I've really gotten into the last year and a half, two years into breathing, doing, you know, meditative breathing, cycling my breathing, breath holds, which has done it tremendous for me, doing the hot and cold application. Um, and so starting to put that, I've also done the, um, the tanks where you'll go in, the flotation tanks. I don't know if you've ever experienced sure. the sensory deprivation tanks, powerful, which cause that effect but um help me with that but whenever i really noticed just going and getting with the um technology it just really brought me to a calm you know really resting place that's beautiful you're very aware the science behind what you're experiencing is all of us 2017 18 are dealing with a lot of variables two kids a family a business growing your life training. I mean, we're rocking and rolling. So many of us don't really get the kind of training effect that we should or we would like to have. So the body slips into a low grade fight or flight or constant high alert. One of the advantages, and you, most, you get this whether you're aware of it or not, so you're tuned in enough to know, is that it will take that brain out of a beta type rhythm to a more alpha state. So after a sufficient charge, you have what I call a waking alpha. So your cells, when the cells, when the magnetic field penetrates the cells, it draws in more oxygen. It alkalizes them. It takes the brain out of stress. It will move the activity from the posterior lobe to the brain, to the frontal cortex, balance the cerebral hemispheres. And that's part of what you were experiencing. So if, if you and I were... I'll just use swimming because I swim. If you and I were the same age, if we were competing in the same event and you were eating and charging and we were of equal abilities, you'd probably kick my ass. It's just, <laughs> you got afterburners, I don't. Mm. I just would have to have the skill, right? <laughs> yes. okay, but all things being equal with yeah. the only variable, yeah. you know, the charge in your diet and things like that, you're in that state. It would be like the martial arts. The guy that's in reaction gets beat up by the guy that's in response. Mm -hmm. You know, you're responding to the fight as opposed to reacting to the fight. Right. So you're responding to your life as opposed to reacting. So it kind of brings me to a conclusion uh, for myself. You know, I've been in the health and wellness. I'm similar to you. Um, I got in health and wellness when I was... 10 years old and, and, and it was more of being picked on or bullied that I decided to pursue like how to be fit, how to not be overweight and began this journey for the last 26 years, you know, and I was in team sports and all that stuff. So, so I wanted to be the best and to figure it out. So I committed to that kind of, you know, approach to life. And at 36, now reflecting on, um, you know, now having children and married and, and going through my 20s. What, what really came to the foundation for me is that, and I'm curious to hear your opinion, is that hormonal response is really the driving force behind our experience on this planet. And, and dependent on what's coming in our eyes and our ears and, and our um, you know, emotional state can be determining how the hormones are being produced in our body that are causing us to be in reactive mode that really pins down into the, you know, the real drivers that how we engage, you know, relationships, engage the environment around us. And I know we're talking about cells and you were talking about addressing, you know, the adrenals through the um, uh, technology. So from your experience at your vantage point of the years you've been on this planet using the technology, how does the technology impact hormones? How do you perceive hormones and the human experience through that, you know, those delivery vehicles. Wow. That is so well said. Thank I you. love the way you're navigating. You sh that should be printed out for people. I, I agree with you a hundred percent. I really think that is when one of the things that I do is I do consultations through Skype. People will call me up and they'll say, hey, 
I have this, this, and this. Can you help me? And I go, well, number one is I don't treat anything. What we're going to do is help get your body healthy because when you're healthy, you don't have disease X, Y, or Z. So going exactly along with what you're saying, I ask them three simple questions. And I don't let them belabor. They got to answer immediately. One is, are you happy with the way you feel? And the first thing they usually go is, well, F no. What do you think I call? <laughs> are you happy with the way you're aging? Not are you happy you're aging. Who wants to age? Are you happy with the way you're aging? No. And that comes from 20-year-olds as well as up the chain. The next question, which is the kicker, do you have happy cells? And most people look like my little terrier and go, huh? And kind of bobblehead. The idea being is if the cells are happy, you feel great. You don't feel good, you feel great. If the cells are unhappy, they're not functioning properly and you have X, Y, or Z. What you're describing is the state of your cells, which is your brain, your endocrine system, and how you perceive things. So if I have happy cells, and I'm in that, whatever way we want to use that, say, that natural happy state, my cells are happy, and you turn around and you say something that really hurts my feelings, it doesn't mean that I don't feel it. My response rather than my reaction is, is, wow, Jeremy's such a good guy. He must be having a day. Maybe I need to love him a little more, give him a hug, give him a kick in the butt, take him out for cappuccino or whatever it is. If I have unhappy cells, my whole perception of the event is going to be different and I react and respond to you in a negative way and get mad and walk away. So am I reacting or responding? And it's just what you're saying. It is based so much on how that endocrine system, how our hormones are working. In a high performance athlete, usually the best performances, I know just because I follow swimming now, it's the guy that breaks the world record turns around and goes, God, I didn't feel like I was going that fast. It was just easy. You know, the basketball, the basketball player goes, God, I couldn't miss a thing. All I had to do was throw it at the basket. It went through. So it's those high state, which, of course, are going to correspond also with the hormonal state. And the way that you languaged it, I thought it was perfect. Oh, great. I'd edit, I'd edit this thing and write that down. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. For sure. It's really kind of my thesis in the sense of, like, I've been seeking, you know, to what is the baseline? What is it? Where do we get access to the root? The root and the real, and it, that's what I really was been seeking. And you know, I started out with it was it was fitness and nutrition, and that was my focus. You know, fitness and nutrition. And once I started to get lower down into the system, and then I started to look at, at breath and how breath impacts the system, and, and looking well, and then it was like okay. Really, and I've gone through a lot of different training to bring me to this, you know, realization. But it, it, it really came down to the hormones, the delivery system that was just so, you know, there for me. And then when we look at the alkalinity and the acidity and the health, you know, and, and it's how do you really get there? Because I, I really believe what I love about your technology is that it shows where we are in 2017, 2018, how we can help with the technology that surrounds us. But from a baseline, if, if people have access to breathing and water, which everyone for the most part in, in the you know Western world has access to, then they can exactly. they can start. Then when we start to have access to you know great food as well as breath and water and then we apply the technology, we can really start to um, do amazing things and we can empower people um, and get them out of disease and that much more into you know you know, enjoying the, the fruits of this life, you know, but, but it kind of comes into what I see that the technology inside of our body, you know, is, is very powerful. And I think that for myself was fully awakening the potential of humanity when we really understand our own technology, 
and then you know force apply to that with this outside technology to apply to our internal technology I mean we can really live fulfilled lives and and that's kind of been my pursuit and it's fun to talk with people like yourself that are on you know been on the pursuit for more years than myself to know that we're connecting and through this technology and, and communicating that you know and, and it, performance is great but just sheer uh, enjoyment of life and the joy that life can bring um, versus being in a depressed you know state and and so you know, I really find this to be, um, you know, exciting conversation. I, I like where you're coming from very much because it's really enabling us to touch the consciousness. When you have happy cells, you're not thinking about being happy. Someone that's happy isn't thinking about being happy because they are. If you're not happy, you're thinking about how come I'm not happy. So that consciousness, when you're healthy, you're not really concerned with your health. You may be supporting it, but you're not walking around going, I wish I was healthy because you're too busy enjoying the moment. And when we look at health from the dynamic of going with those children of yours, what's the health all about? Well, I call it precious moments. How many precious moments do you want with those children? Well, my goodness, as many as you can. There's not enough breaths. There's not enough life to be able to spend with the ones we love. And to have a high degree of wellness, consciousness, to be able to enjoy all those moments, um, I think that's what it's all about. I think that's what affected me losing my mother and father so early, going, wow, it really didn't have to be that way. I mean, we ha don't have all the predictors, and anything can happen to anyone. On the other hand, the net effect of doing more good things than bad things usually produces a much better result. And it goes back to just what do those cells need? It's exactly what you're saying. Well, they need light. They need oxygen. That's the breathing. That's a basic mechanism of our body. People knowing how to breathe, my goodness. Water, 80% of our body is water. 99% of the molecules in our body are water molecules. How important is good water? And then we can get into the H3O2 discussion, and that's a whole nother one. But there's so many things out there. I look at the PEP device as just an addition because there's so much of, what do I want to say, bad magnetic pollution around there, electromagnetic. It helps us offset it because the Earth itself is losing its magnetic field. We work around computers. We're talking to one right now. And this helps balance out things that we couldn't normally do. Not all of us can go for a walk in the woods for six hours a day. What, what I wanted to ask you is, is there anything that I'm not asking you that you would like to share? Because, you know, something that you're passionate about or something that would be of value to the listeners. I would say the message would be having to do with remember your cells have personality. If you're not feeling the way that you'd like to feel, you probably don't have happy cells. So rather than working on what you think may be wrong, the elegant and very simple question becomes, what do I need to do to make my cells happy? What are they missing? Well, they need, ex they need oxygen. Are they missing exercise? They need food. Am I fooling myself as to what I'm really eating? Do they need rest? Well, I don't have time to rest. Well, you may not have time to be healthy. So by turning around and asking your cells what they really want, I think it can be a very simple way to raise the consciousness of the body. That's great. Awesome. Well, that kind of is a great place to conclude the conversation. We uh, welcome uh, you as a guest, and I really look forward to meeting you in person. I don't know when that will happen. I look forward to get you over here. <laughs> yeah. You know, our... Um, 10 year anniversary, me and my wife's anniversary is, um, we're eight and a half years in. So on our 10 year anniversary, we're going to come back to Hawaii. Uh, Perfect. I've been making those plans. So, uh, we'll have to come to your Island and, we'll connect. and, and meet up and, and maybe this, um, other processes of the business will get us together, but I'm really excited, um, yeah. to, to learn more and get more experience with y'all's, um, y'all's technology and, and getting on. I'm so glad Emilio's here in the Austin area. 
to be able to work with and access. And I know that um, with our upcoming event, we're going to start exposing athletes to this technology. So I think it's a great uh, connection, great relationship. So thank you for your time and, and uh, all you. your work you've done. Thank you. And thank you for your insight. You gave me a lot. I'm very grateful. Thank you for joining us on the Operator Podcast. Please join us on our virtual platforms, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and we will see you soon.